Hey guys, today I want to talk to you about being courageous for your service dog. So a lot of times we talk about our dogs being confident in doing things and we don't really talk about us like having the courage or confidence to do things ourselves. And I think this is really important because a lot of times for me in particular, whenever I'm starting something new with her, particularly whenever I was starting public access, I was really intimidated and I was just really just not sure what to think, of course, because you've never done it before. I pulled in the parking lot, had panic attacks, and left, like no joke, at least three times. It's because I didn't have the courage to actually go in and see what would happen. I had a feeling it would be okay because I felt like she was ready, but I didn't know. And you're not gonna know, so you just have to have the courage to actually go do it, you know, anytime you're starting something new. So that's what I talk to you guys about is just having faith that it will actually go okay and also having the the courage to know hey even if it doesn't go okay it's still something you can learn from and that's okay and you can try your very hardest you can do it see what happens if it doesn't go as planned then take a step back evaluate learn from the experience and then of course try again i'm not saying to push your dog or push yourself before you're ready because there is a point where you're gonna you know not be ready and you don't need to push yourself then but i'm talking about whenever your dog is you know they're fully trained and they really are ready and you you just know in your heart that that is a good time for them to do it but then it's you that's stopping you because you're like what if this or what if this or you know you hear all the horror stories in the service dog groups and you're like what if that happens to me what if someone runs up and is mean what if somebody's kid runs up and grabs my dog or pulls their tail or what if a manager comes up to me all the things that happen in the surf song groups that we see that are just like so scary. All those things, that's what I'm talking about. You have to just be brave and courageous and try anyway. That's how you're gonna build your confidence because you can't build confidence in something you haven't done before. So if you just, you know, think about all the stuff that's stopping you and none of it is because you know your dog acts a fool. <laughs> <laughs> at that point, be brave and try it out, see what happens. Whenever we first started doing public access, like real public access, not just training for it, we actually were gonna start in March of 2020. We did go. We went to Publix once. This was the third time or fourth time that I'd actually pulled into a parking lot of a grocery store with intentions to go in. And this time I actually did it because the other times I had stayed in the car, literally had a panic attack and sat there for a stupid amount of time and then drove home. So on this day, this was the day we actually went in. We're gonna go into Publix and I have anxiety about it. Cause I have anxiety about everything, don't I? Yes, I do. You're gonna help me, right? Yeah. So I had broke out in a rash, sitting in the parking lot, thinking about it, and then I was like, you know what? We're just gonna go in. We're just gonna do it. It went fine. We got a loaf of bread, we checked out, and we left, and it was fine. And you know, she did great. Everything went better than what I had expected in my mind. No one said anything to us. Nobody was rude to us. Nothing happened bad. So it was awesome. And we were gonna keep on going. So the maybe two or three days after that, um, our area, they had started telling people not to go out unless they had to, you know, the, the whole illness thing kind of caught up with the area. And so I'd stopped public access with her. Literally, we went one time. <laughs> um, so after that, it was, I guess, June and then we started going again. But this time I had more confidence because this time I was like, you know, I know she does okay. I knew that she did good. So we went to a store, you know, I kind of had the intentions of not getting a lot of stuff, but I didn't know what, you know, I didn't know how she would do. So I had my little list with me and I was ready to go. And we went and I did the same thing. I had a panic attack, but we went in anyway because I knew from the time before I knew that it had gone okay. And we had done stuff around town, you know, like in smaller places before we went back to a grocery store just to make sure she was okay. Um, because we did have like maybe two months there 
where we weren't really able to go out and to stores and stuff. When we were able to go back out in like June, I was like, you know, if we're just gonna do it, we're gonna see what happens. Once again, she did great. Um, that's whenever I discovered that she was fearful of coolers. So that's whenever we started working on that. But since that time, I haven't been anywhere without her. So I don't go, you know, to stores or anything without her at all ever now. I feel like at the point where I was panicking about brain therapy in with me, I feel like that was a point where I was truly like, is this something I truly need? Because if it's bringing me this much panic and this much fear, is this something that I actually need to do? But then, you know, after that, of course, I had gone out with, without her again. And, you know, it puts it into perspective because it's way scarier for me to be out and dissociate and not know where I am or what I'm doing than to have a little bit of like, well, what if this doesn't go well? Because I know that she's gonna bring me back and I know that she's gonna help me if there's anything wrong. I know some people would be like, well, if it's bringing you that much like panic and anxiety about going with them at first, like, why would you do that? And, you know, I had a lot of self-doubt about that at first too, because I'm like, well, if this is actually weighing me down and it's making me have a problem, then why am I going to take her? I had to go without her because of, you know, the illness and things that got shut down. I didn't know how bad it was. I didn't want to bring her and, you know, contaminate her and then bring her back in the house, all the things. And so during that time was whenever I was really questioning, because it was right after we had started doing public access and then I'd had to not and I was still having the anxious and anxiety feelings about it. And at that point, that's when I really decided like, yeah, she actually helps me so much because I don't have those feelings. I might have it leading up to it if it's something I've never done before, but I would have that anyway. But it's the stuff like whenever I dissociate and I'm like, I don't know where I am. And I'm standing in the Fruit Loop aisle for, you know, 45 minutes just staring at a space and people have to come up and be like, hi, are you okay? It's like, whoa, I don't know. That's the kind of stuff where I'm like having her because if I start doing that, she's like, hey, <laughs> you here? So that's where I know that, you know, having her definitely outweighs the, you know, the, scary part of starting something new with her. Um, but it's not scary at all now. And that's the other thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about is after you do the stuff that's scary, like after you do the, the big scary thing, it's not as scary the next time. It's still a little scary, possibly, depending on how you process stuff. For me, it was super scary. And then it was like, oh, this went well. And then it was like, kind of scary a little bit, but then it was like, not really that bad scary, it's kind of okay. Yeah, and then it was just like not as scary at all. Like, and every time it's just, you know, gotten less and less scary and now it's just normal. Like I said, I just wanted to try to encourage you guys to just have the courage in yourself and to be brave and to do the things that you know you need to do to actually have your service dog trained. You have to make sure they are where you think they need to be. Like where you, you know, you know what I'm talking about. You know where they need to be. And you know, you have that gut feeling of knowing like this isn't right. And that's not what I'm saying to overcome because you need to listen to that. Like if you know your dog is reactive or if you know they have accidents or you know they act wild or whatever, whatever you know, if you know that, that's not what I'm saying to push past. You, you feel really strong that you can trust them, but your fear is other people. Your fear is like a manager is gonna say something to you or someone in public is gonna be rude to you or you're gonna end up on fake spotting because you don't have the coolest vest or maybe you have an Amazon vest or, or whatever. That's the stuff I'm talking about. You just have to try your best to overcome and just not let it bother you. Easier said than done. I totally know that. I'm just saying, put faith in yourself, have faith in yourself, have faith in God. If you're a person who prays, pray, you know, ask God for strength to help you just to, you know, do the right thing and to be brave and to try it out. So if you do have a problem, after you've like mustered up all the strength and the courage and you're going for it, if you do have a problem, try to reflect on what actually happened, what went wrong, write it down, document it for yourself, so that you can see, you know, well, this happened, this happened, this happened, and you can start figuring out how it went wrong, what you could have done differently, and then next time learn from that. 
documenting what you're doing as far as training is super, super important. So you can do this in just a plain notebook if you want to. I have made service dog training journals and I will link them below for you guys. It's just a way to document what you're doing. And that's just really important. So it doesn't matter, like I said, if you're documenting in a, a notepad, cool, whatever. But if you want something a little bit more organized and a way to do it a little bit better, um, like I said, I do have training journals. They have tasks listed in them as well as some socialization checklist, which I can never say socialization checklist, but it has that as well. So anyway, no matter what you do, just make sure you document what you're doing. This is gonna help you to reflect and look back and see how far you've come. This is gonna help you to reflect and see like, what are the things that are causing problems if there are problems? Like if you run into a problem, what made it happen? Like, was your dog the problem? Were you the problem? Was it your nerves that were the problem? Was it somebody interfering with you if that was the problem? Just documenting as much as you can, that's super, super important. I hope this was helpful. I just wanna inspire you guys to actually, you know, be brave and help you to be brave and help you to realize that you're number one, you're not alone. You're not alone in this and the other thing you have to just push yourself and, and just try when it's appropriate obviously don't push yourself and get hurt don't push yourself and hurt your dog don't push your dog before they're ready all that this is just a self-confidence thing for you the handler so if you enjoyed this please give it a thumbs up subscribe to our channel i'll link some videos over here for you guys thanks for watching guys we'll see you soon bye